Harvard University, and I want to introduce my faculty member, Ron Walsworth, to talk about why supporting research together is so important. Yeah, thank you, Denise. So I'm a faculty in the physics department where I teach and do research, and my story today is about the tight connection between teaching and research. So about 10 to 15 years ago, I was teaching a course in the physics department called Widely Applied Physics, and I decided to develop some new units for that course, and particularly a unit on the search for Earth-like planets around other stars, known as exoplanets. And I didn't know anything about that field, but I wanted to learn, and it was a good thing to teach to the students. Talked to some of my astronomy colleagues, developed a unit for that course, and through that process, I learned that one of the major limitations that astronomers had uh, for finding Earth-like planets around other stars was that their telescopes and their spectrographs, which they used to look at the, the stars and the Doppler shifts of the stars induced by the planets as they go around them, those uh, spectrographs drift over time, and they try to correct for those drifts, but they weren't using state-of-the-art technology, which I knew about from the optical physics community, technology called the laser frequency cone. And so I had this idea that we could take laser frequency cones and adapt them to solve the problem for astronomers. And it took a number of years, and a lot of graduate students, undergraduates, postdocs were involved, but eventually it was successful. We built a prototype, and by like 2011, I think, we had a prototype of this so-called astro cone now at a telescope in Arizona. And by 2014 or so, we had a final version at a real state-of-the-art telescope that was in the Canary Islands off the coast of West Africa. And it, by 2015, we had it working well enough that we could stabilize the spectrographs and the telescopes really, really well. So that problem technically was now solved, and now, now the astronomers have the ability to be able to see Earth-like planets around other stars. But the story's not finished because, in fact, though the, now the instrumentation is stabilized, um, it, it turns out that the stars themselves have noise. They vibrate, they have sunspots, things like that. So we've moved on to the next step of the problem, which is build a, build a small telescope to look at our sun to try to figure out the origin of these effects so we can correct uh, the data analysis pipelines to be able to now take advantage of our astrocone and really find those earthquake planets around other stars. And I've taken the things we're learning about the sun and mixed them back into the teaching that I'm doing in other courses that I'm teaching now. So that's the story I would like to, to tell, which is that teaching and research, cutting end research at a place like Harvard are deeply intertwined. The students are closely involved. A lot of the ideas either come from them or are stimulated by the faculty's desire to teach to them and learn ourselves. And so that's my story. Thank you, Ron.